Well, I don't know as it is really a band, but uh, we just get together and play together. Uh, so it, anytime uh, when people would come over to visit, we uh, would just pull out the instruments and start playing. Dad would be on the fiddle, um, Joanne, Levine, uh, Joanne on the piano, Levine on the guitar. Now, I was usually pretty small then. So anyway, Clem, uh, he learned to play the piano and, well, he plays lots of things. Yeah, no, whenever we get together, it's just always been music. Uh, there's nothing like music. <laughs> Life wouldn't be the same without music. Do you remember? Years ago. Years <laughs> ago. <laughs> I'm not going to say this how is, many years. This is the original road, though, that, that we, when we, when we came out here. It was when just... When we came out here, it was just a, a bulldoze trail, uh, and there was hummocks on both sides, remember? Yeah. And, uh... One vehicle could travel along here. Yeah. This one vehicle. And in the springtime, I remember, along here, it was all corduroy. You know what corduroy is? <laughs> there was poles laid crossways of the road they cut trees and dirt and laid put them on top of that. Yeah, side by side. Yeah, because otherwise <clears throat> the ground was so soft that everybody would get stuck. So. And then uh, that one summer, what happened to those hummocks along the road? Uh, the strawberries were really good. Do you remember that? Yes, I remember. And uh, Mom had us out picking strawberries every uh, that one summer, every day. Yeah. And she canned a uh, hundred yeah. quarts of strawberries one summer. Some of them were yeah. what we used to call whoppers. Yeah. <laughs> they were about like so big. Yeah. <laughs> For you, 
have the dreams that you cherish been broken? Is your soul filled with bitterness too? Standing somewhere in the shadows, you'll find Jesus. He's a friend. Somewhere in the shadows you will find him And you'll know him by the nail prints in his hands And you'll know him by the nail prints in his hands I can remember going up on the hill there and we were picking blueberries and and uh, then mum said there was over on the other side there was a bunch of graves and they were really old ones from when the people went through here going up to uh, the Yukon to the gold rush and they got scurvy yeah, yeah. and well, if they had died. known she said if they had known they would uh, would have been able to uh, dig the snow away and get the cranberries that were under there and lots of cranberries because they grew needed up the vitamin C. To go up a little, there's lots of pine tree up there, and they grow on the pines. We used to go it. picking uh, <laughs> uh, cranberries and blueberries. Remember, Dad made those pickers. Oh yeah, berry picker, did. little yeah. box, and uh, drove nails in the end, like little forks, and you just go along and just scoop it up, scoop yeah. up the berries. Uh, the first time I ever remember singing in public was when I was about nine or ten years old. And it was when, before we moved out here, we lived in Loon Lake, Saskatchewan. And we, us older kids, we had to walk a mile and a half to school and back every day. And, but this was at Christmas time and the teacher knew I could sing because I always sang with the kids. and. In the morning we always sang O Canada and then at night we had to sing God Save the King. It was the king then that was in. And so she asked me, she told me she wanted me to sing uh, Away in a Manger for the Christmas concert. So we were always told we had to do what the teacher said. So I practiced and practiced at home and everything and and then it was really cold that night, <coughs> excuse me, and we didn't have a vehicle, so Dad, but Dad had a, a good team that was reliable and, and a sleigh, and he had a little caboose he put on the sleigh and he heated up. I remember that as plain as day. We went to church, to the school, and the hall was right behind the school, and we went in there, and here, oh, the whole hall was full of people, and all, all the parents and grandparents and anybody else that wanted to come and the kids. And of course, I got up there and I got stage fright. I was just really afraid, but I, I did manage to get through the song, but it wasn't nearly as good. And that was the end of it for me for years and years. I never sang again in public. I tried it once in church out here, but that was enough for me. I was just too shy and afraid to sing out in front. But then one day, <coughs> our family was all together and we were all deciding, wondering, we were thinking we should name our band something. And uh, we decided, well, we would call ourselves the, uh, the Yester Years. <laughs> and we thought that was a good name, so we named it and advertised this program we were having at the Pine Valley Hall. And lots of people came, a whole bunch of people. We had practiced and each one of us was going to do a couple of songs while I picked the smallest, shortest songs I could get. And, well, we did it and everything, and it was all, it went pretty good, but later on we found out that someone else had had a name like that. I don't know who it was, but someone up towards Fort St. John, and I don't really know for sure if they ever did, but 
we heard that anyhow. We didn't keep that name. We just went back to Morton's Family Band. Well, we didn't really even call ourselves anything because then we started the Talent of the Valley and we had different people all the time coming to do things with us. So we didn't really, and only mostly at the coffee house lately, we've been known as the Morton Family Band. So anyhow, uh, our dad always told us, you know, he always had this saying, he always had a twinkle in his eye and a smile on his face, but he always said, you know, a man's worth not a di it's not a worth a dime unless he can sing at his work. So I think every one of us sang at our work. We would always sing and work and play and sing. But uh, I know my dad always did, and Bob, every time I'd go over there, they'd be working away and singing out in the yard. And uh, that's what I all remember about music. And, and I know my sister said we, she couldn't get along without music, and neither could I, just not any good. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without music. Sometimes we go to camp meeting down at Camp Hope. Once in a while our church has a camp meeting and I've made it down there sometimes, but you'd have to go about 10 days without having my piano and I, it was just hard. Every so often I would sneak into a place and go and play a little. <laughs> it's just good to have music. <laughs> You're discouraged. God will take care of you along life's troubled way. No matter how the road grows rough and rocky, have faith in Him and don't forget to pray. He will take care. came through here there was no railroad I no. can remember when the railroad came through and uh, when we lived further up north at the old milk camp there I can remember the the railroad guys they they had a what, they had a camp yeah. yeah and there was two two guys that used to come over and bring their accordions they were Italians D'Angelo was their name D'Angelo there that. was Tony and Bert yeah. D'Angelo, do you don't remember them? Yeah, I can't remember oh, them. Oh, they could play their 
accordion so good. They would come over in the <coughs> evenings and play accordions. And of course, Joanne would be on the piano and Levina on her guitar. And Dad would play the fiddle. Dad would grab the fiddle and play it. And <laughs> that was all our entertainment. Uh, so far back, I don't <laughs> remember. It just, it just sort of happened. There was always a guitar hanging on the wall on a nail and uh, piano was always sitting there and mum taught us lessons and uh, uh, I always wanted to, uh, well I started playing by note and I like to take real complicated songs that had all kinds of notes on them and uh, the more complicated the more challenge it was and the more I wanted to do it. So I'd take these songs and I would practice, I would, I would read the notes and practice it and I learned it from memory, from the notes. So I could never play fluently by, by notes. It was always uh, by memory. I could read notes enough to be able to take a piece that I didn't know and figure out the tune of it and, and the way it was supposed to go. But I could never play it flu fluently. So I, I learned about, oh, I don't know, maybe a half a dozen or so, uh, or maybe eight or 10 songs that I could play from memory. And uh, it, it got to be boring. It was, uh, you do it and you do it, and, and, and it's just after a while, it was just wasn't interesting anymore. So then I started trying to uh, play by, by ear a little bit. That way I could take a song that I've heard and I could kind of put it together and play a little bit by ear. But I never did do it enough to be able to play in all the different keys. It was only certain keys I played them in. So, uh, and then the guitar was always there, so sometimes I just take the guitar down and play with it, learn and and then try the fiddle, and I tried I play a tune on most instruments, but I could never play anything really good. <laughs> That's kind of the way my music went. I guess there were times when things went wrong. I never really bought, let it bother me, because if, if it didn't go wrong, that wasn't me. <laughs> Think, <laughs> just do the best you could do. We just did the best we could do, and if it was a mistake, I didn't let it bother me. Because I've seen, I, I watched, uh, I went to different uh, professional music, uh, uh, people playing professionally, and, and I watched really close. When I learned to play the bass, well, I, I was at a uh, music festival where these people were playing. It was a professional band playing. and. Uh, I, I took a pair of binoculars, I was sitting back quite a way, so I was watching the bass player. And uh, the music sounded really nice. All at once, she made a little mistake on the bass, just a little slip. And I seen her look over at the guitar player and he looked at her and they smiled at each other. But the music just rolled on so professionally. Nobody heard it, nobody knew it. I knew it because I was looking for, I was, I was uh, I was watching for it and I seen it happen and I thought that's the way it should be. You know, people, sure, you're going to make mistakes, but just let it roll on. Just carry on and keep going with it. That's the way it sounds good to me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like I played with other people too sometimes and uh, went to a, a camp meeting one time and, and there was people from all over playing and we all got together instruments and we started playing songs that everybody knew and uh, I, I, I thought it was amazing how how you can bring people together that never seen anybody before don't know each other and uh, and uh, you can play music together and everything all fits you know, people from different parts of the country if they all know the same song pretty well just everything just kind of fits together and you can I think it seems kind of amazing how you can do that with music. Yeah. What uh, way I come up with the words to this song was uh, <clears throat> in the Bible there's a story of uh, Moses years and years ago where he led the people out of uh, bondage out of Egypt 
and they wandered in the desert, and he told them, uh, make me, build me, God told Moses, build me a sanctuary so I'll have a place to dwell among my people. And he told them how to build this thing. He told them the shape, the size, and, and uh, uh, the materials to use. He even told them the colors to make it. And uh, he said they set up priests to uh, officiate in the, in the sanctuary. And he told them, put a ribbon of blue in the hem of their garment, or around the, hem, the, the bottom of their garment. <clears throat> they put a ribbon of blue there. And when uh, people looked at that ribbon, it was to remind them of God's law. God's law is a reflection of his character, and God is love. So uh, that's what I was thinking about when I wrote the words to this song. The ribbon of blue. I was deep in the pleasures that this world had to give. I was not living honest and true. But when Jesus entered in, He took away my sin, and He wrapped me in a ribbon of blue. There's a ribbon of blue, so to Him I'll be true. He has given His commandments of love. Shown me the way, and him I will stay, for I'm encircled in a ribbon of blue. If you are feeling low and you have no place to go. Discouraged, and you don't know what to do. Just remember God above, put His arms of love around you like a ribbon of blue. There's a ribbon of blue, so to Him I'll be true. He has given commandments of love He has shown me the way So in Him I will stay For I'm encircled in a ribbon of blue When Jesus left that day and ascended on his way he said watch and pray and i'll return for you so go tell it far and near that our lord will soon appear he'll be coming in the heavens of blue there's a ribbon of blue so to him I'll be true, he has given his commandments of love. He has shown me the way, so on him I will stay, for I'm encircled in a ribbon of blue. Yes, I'm encircled in a ribbon of blue. Remember that time when they just, just after they were started, the trail into the Jackfish Trail? Dad, it was, the roads were really bad and he had to build a little bridge, two planks going over that, that creek. Oh! Yeah. And they called it Martin's Creek. That's <laughs> right where I lived there. Yeah, yeah that, down just old, down on the down down down. place there. And uh, he said there was a, Bob said there was a, 
I think it was an engineer or something that was the first one to cross it. It was a surveyor or something was the first one to cross that, that bridge that he made. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Besides us, we had to get out and walk across the planks. <laughs> It, uh, it's it's been with us all our life. We used to uh, when we lived in Saskatchewan. I remembered uh, uh, the a little town was about five miles away from us, and Dad would take the team of horses and go into town. And, uh, and we didn't have a truck at that time. Uh, and he would uh, come home in the evening, and we could hear him way down the road. He'd be singing and yodeling, and and we could hear him coming. Uh, yeah, it would be dark out and the sound would carry really good and we'd hear him coming, oh yeah, he's probably down out at Town Hill, which was about four miles away or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, Loon <laughs> Lake was five miles. Back. Yeah. He, when he got to that corner, but, we could uh, hear him. That's, uh, it started with that and then Mum's playing music and uh, a piano and teaching, teaching p piano to different people. It was just always music in our house. So uh, we were only up in this country about a year before the Pruckles came. You, you've heard of the Pruckles, the big game hunters? Yeah, yeah, because I can remember them, uh, I can remember them kind of riding in on horseback. And Mum's garden, uh, Mum had a pretty good garden that year, and I can remember her giving them uh, they were they were up here looking for uh, land. She always had good gardens. Yeah, and I can remember them riding their ho horses in, and it was around supper time, and I think she made supper, and she gave them a bunch of vegetables and, you know, things from the garden. Yeah. <clears throat> and then in later years, uh, and when they became big game hunters, and, and they would go out and guiding, uh, I went with them up into the mountains up to Kakwa Lake and helped earn a cook up there. Yeah, she was a good cook. She said her mother had papers to cook for the queen. <laughs> but it, it was fun. I really enjoyed that being up in the mountains by this Kakwa Lake. It was just big lake, lake down in the mountains. We seen avalanches come down right practically into the lake. and Yeah, it was beautiful up there. No, yeah, and I remember, oh, I'm, I'm so mad at myself. <laughs> I remember uh, I was out in the evening and we had tents there with, uh, with big, uh, great big long tables in and then the big game hunters would come in and we'd all sit in there and have supper. Well, they were sitting around after supper and uh, I went out and I was walking around doing something or other. I don't remember what it was, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I looked down the lake and here was this big moose walking out to the lake. Oh, and I'm running to the tent. Oh, there's a moose out there. And I'm kicking myself ever since because that moose didn't have a chance. Poor guy. I felt bad about that. <laughs> Why, did they shoot him? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, yeah. I wish I had never done that, but cause, you know that's not really fair to the moose. I mean, they they were supposed to be out hunting them. <laughs> you just well, just well, I shouldn't say too much. Remember the moose that walked out on on the our garden? <laughs> yeah, you shot it. <laughs> Okay, this song I uh, wrote for my sister, Luvina. Uh, she had Luke Eric's disease. And she used to play, oh, every instrument you could think of, but she especially liked guitar. And uh, I started, when she was sick, I started writing songs. And she kept telling me to sound more country. She wanted me to sound more country. Well, I didn't know <laughs> how, but I thought, well, what's more country than uh, Oh, how does this song start out? <laughs> There's a long, long trail of winding. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she kept telling me to uh, play more country, play more country. But she was at the point where she, she couldn't uh, talk anymore because the cords in her throat were all uh, paralyzed and she would write everything out by hand. But I finally wrote this song for her and I played it for her and, and I'll just always remember how she, every time I played it for her, she just smiled. 
So anyway, this is it. <clears throat> All of a sudden, we saw this moose down at the end of the garden. Yeah. <laughs> Linda shot it. Yeah. Linda shot it. Linda and Clem went running to the bunkhouse to grab the rifles, <laughs> and Linda was quicker. <laughs> yeah, I shot that moose. Yeah, when you were only you six, were 17 or 18, were not you? 17 or 16. Seven, 16 seven. No, I was about 17, well, I guess, yeah. somewhere yeah. around there. Moose must have been close to 100 yards away, eh? Yeah. Then and then the we cleaned it up. We had garden. moose meat. But I knew, <laughs> I knew that the second shot I got, I knew I got it in the neck because his head just dropped. Oh. Poor guy. 
I wouldn't want to shoot another one, but at that time we didn't have any meat. We were hungry, you know. So we didn't have food. that was way back yeah. when. <laughs> then we went and butchered it. Uh, we had it all butchered by the time Dad got home. Yeah, Mom helped and yeah. got it all got out, got it out, and, and Dad said it was the cleanest. <laughs> Cleanest stuff uh, ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Job well, it was right beside the lake, gay. Eh? We yeah. were able to clean it up good. And then we got the uh, hunter's license later. <laughs> <laughs> What are you laughing at?